Welcome to the Modality booth where I'm joined by my good friend, Dr. Amy Patel, who's the current president of the American Association of Women in Radiology. We're very excited to announce our partnership today um, where we're going to collaborate on our joint mission of advancing and supporting women in radiology and transforming the way radiologists learn and thrive. Um, in support of this mission, you know, we've been partnering for the better part of two years now with the AWR to um, elevate the amazing faculty at the AWR, giving them the platform to teach. And it's really, really critical that we have a diverse group of faculty inspiring our future generation of radiologists. And so I couldn't be more excited to be doing this in partnership with you today. Thank you. We're really excited about the partnership and just improving ways that we can amplify uh, women radiologists and radiation oncologists. And we have so many great members in the AWR who are fantastic educators, So, uh, but they need a platform to amplify their skills. And so this partnership we feel with Modality uh, can serve that purpose and not just elevate uh, radiologists and radiation oncologists in the United States, but from around the world. Uh, we now have an international member membership category with the AWR. We got a lot of feedback that there were uh, women radiologists and radiation oncologists from different countries not getting the support that we provide in America. So we uh, are now expanding our tent uh, on a global scale. So it just felt like the right fit with Modality to help amplify uh, everyone under the same umbrella. So uh, for now, I will sign it and then you'll sign it. And then I want to chat with you a little bit about both what we're going to be doing together and sort of what you think are some of the biggest needs in um, you know, improving this issue? Sure, absolutely. All right. And it says in our partnership agreement, uh, our mission is to collaborate on shared, on our shared commitment to advancing and supporting women in radiology uh, and transforming the way radiologists learn and thrive. So we're very excited about the partnership. <laughs> you know, why am I allowed to be here talking about this? I, I don't know that I'm the most qualified person, but I've been building this platform now for the better part of um, five, six years. Our second faculty that we brought on was a woman named Dr. Janie Collins. And um, for those that knew Janie, she's very dynamic, powerful, one of the earliest pioneers in academic radiology, period. And she's had one of the most prolific careers as, as a female radiologist in, in education. And so she really inspired me and helped us think about what would it mean to build an amazing platform. Um, in education and helped us build out our roster of right, radiologists. She went one by one, knocking on doors and calling on doctors to to, uh, um, to participate. But day one, she helped me think about how important it was to include a, a wide range of pieces. Um, and, and I don't know if you know Dr. Collins, she's actually been kind of ill lately. And then and Dave Usom kind of took over. And I yeah. think he did a really good job taking the torch after that. Sure. Uh, making sure that you know having a diverse you know roster has been really important. So, okay, why does all of it matter? You know, I, I can't speak to everybody's experience, but I can speak to my own experience. As my wife's a radiologist. Yeah. She is one of uh, 12 radiologists in her program. She was the only woman. Uh, and so I saw her firsthand, you know, dealing with being the only female radiologist on the team and needing sort of that mentorship and leadership as she navigates, you know, having kids in residency fellowship, trying to build a career, figuring out how to balance it all. And so the importance of her having sort of female leaders and female mentors to look up to is something that I, I feel like I've experienced a little bit firsthand, but, you know, tell me a little bit about your experience and, yeah. and why you think this is important. Yeah, well, um, I kind of had a similar experience to her. Um, I was the first female chief resident in an all-male program um, at the University of Kansas in Wichita in 2015. And... Um, you know, we unfortunately, as much as we are continuing to push, there's still a paucity of women going into the field. So we're still around between, you know, 23 to 27 uh, percent of our, the field of radiology comprised of women. Uh, and, but it's such a wonderful field for women. And, it, you know, I wrote an article that was published in the Journal of the American College of Radiology called um, Radiology's Best Kept Secret. And I talk about in this article how, you know, this is such a wonderful specialty for women. And I wish 
more women knew about this specialty. So I think it's really important for us to amplify who we are, what we do as radiologists, whether it's, you know, me as a breast imager out in the community talking to patients about the importance of getting their mammogram, or whether it's, you know, our organization collaborating with your organization so that women have opportunities to give lectures so that we can have medical students see these women and say, hey, I want to be a prolific educator like that person someday. I mean, everything we do makes an impact. So, I, you know, we hope that in collaboration we can just continue to amplify our efforts. And ultimately the end game is we want to see women thriving in the specialty, but we really want to see more women entering the field. Yeah. So what are um, some of the other initiatives that are going on at AWR that people can learn about? Yeah, so there's a lot of amazing uh, initiatives. Of course, our partnership with Modality, where women radiologists and radiation oncologists, uh, if they would like to share uh, content and give lectures, uh, that is something, a great opportunity for them to provide educational content. So we're really pushing for that. Uh, we have so many virtual and in-person events. We have a really great uh, uh, partnerships with different um, societies, such as Society of Breast Imaging, Society of Pediatric Radiology. We are now... Uh, uh, bringing an educational uh, session to Rank and Ray this year in Boston. We are starting a women's leadership track uh, in collaboration with the Radiology Leadership Institute at their summit uh, in Boston, which will be executed. Uh, the inaugural year will start in 2024. Uh, so that's really great here at RSNA. We collaborate with them and have an educational session every year. So just continuing to build our network so we can provide uh, diverse offerings and content and really, you you know, show the value of being a member. Uh, and, you know, it's a great avenue for networking, sponsorship, mentorship. A lot of women at, in practices and institutions, whether it's academics, private practice, teleradiology, they may not have the support um, where they are physically. So having organizations like a AWR and bringing other partners into our tent is only, you know, to their benefit so that, you know, it can improve their network as well. Yeah, you know, it's... Um it's so shocking that I think over half of med students, active med students, are female. Um, and yet the numbers that go into radiology is really um, low. And, you know, we don't need to speculate exactly on, on why it is that, um, you know, female candidates end up finding that they don't choose radiology. But I think one um, thing that's known is that if you know about radiology, uh, maybe through a friend or through a mentor or often through a family member, um, you're more likely to consider it because you understand yes. all of the benefits of, of being in radiology. And so I think one of the questions I'm asking myself is to be hearing a little bit about the AWRs, you know, how can we work together to reach out to med students too? So um, one thing that our company has been really active in, we make a lot of our educational content free for med students to learn about radiology, get excited about radiology, combined with maybe the AWRs, faculty, and maybe even some sort of mentorship in between to say, hey, you know, I should really be thinking about radiology. How should I consider it? Yeah. Um, it's such a difficult rotation. Yes. Um, it's not a fun rotation as yeah. far as rotations go within med school. Um, and so I, I understand why it's difficult to um, attract people in the field. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that, you know, the more, and we're working on this too at a, like an academic institutional level where we're trying to appeal to those early. So we're trying to, uh, you know, really have boots on the ground at the medical student level. Uh, you know, most medical schools now have a radiology interest group. Uh, so like at the University of Missouri, Kansas oh, City. Yeah, at the University of Missouri, Kansas City, I'm the med I'm the uh, faculty advisor for a radiology interest group. So, um, and we have, I mean, it's been amazing from when I first started back in 2019 to now, um, last year we had 12 students going to radiology and that was like huge for that class. I mean, yeah. when I went into radiology, only five of us were going in and oh, now wow. we're averaging like 12 to 15 per class and the classes aren't very big because we're a six-year med program. So we, we top around like 110 students per class. So it's pretty awesome to see, you know, how, uh, you know, just getting involved, getting these students uh, exposed early can make a huge impact. So I think offering them educational content, for example, for free so they can be exposed to it early can really be paramount in their decision-making of what specialty they choose. 
down the line, are there other things, that, trends that you notice about, um, you know, women in radiology that are unique? You know, do they choose different specialties at different rates that causes impacts downstream or different career paths, like academics versus private or yeah, I anything mean, like that? I think the climate's always changing, you know, like we saw this big, you know, recently we saw a lot of academic women going into private practice because of the flexibility with, um, you know, having more vacation and maybe having more pay. But now we're sort of starting to see a shift back because academic institutions are now increasing uh, how much they are offering for salaries because they, there is such a shortage in the academic world. So we're seeing, you know, those those shifts, um, you know, and I think that as far as like, women in general are going into radiology, I think they're just looking for uh, that flexibility component. I think that I think that now more than ever, um, my and I hope to see this continue to trend, we're seeing that uh, women are being more supported, those who want to have children and things like that, um, and being supported in their practices and institutions. And we want to continue to see those trends because during my time when I was a resident, honestly, the support of having a child in residency really wasn't there. Um, so I had uh, <laughs> three children. I did not have three children. My wife had three children. Uh, it, during residency and fellowship and had a collective four weeks off using vacation Yeah. Uh, for all three. Yeah. And so yeah. Uh, thankfully I think the ACR finally made some positive moves. Yes. I don't think those moves have reached private practice yeah. communities yet or even a lot of hospital systems. Yeah. So uh, you know, it's good to see them leading out in front. But there's so much work to be there's done. There's still a lot of work to be done. But even today I got a text. So at UMKC with our radiology residency program, uh, now um, male residents get six week can take up to six weeks off for paternity leave. Oh, wow. And when I was a resident, they only got one week max of that. Yeah. So we are definitely making headway when it comes not just to the mother, but to the father, even to the partner. We're definitely seeing changes. And yes, we do have a long ways to go, uh, particularly in private practice. But I think now with the new, you know, uh, the paid leave resolution that passed with the ACR, I think people are starting to see now that uh, they've got to think differently about paid leave. So um, last question for you. What advice do you have for, um, let's say, female residents who are you know, trying to get involved and um, you know, play a role in shaping the future? Yeah, I, you know, whenever I have female uh, trainees that come to me and say, you know, like, where do, how do I get started? What do I do? You know, and I tell them, like, for me, the way that, you know, everybody's path is different. But for me, my path really, uh, the way I was able to ascend was really being involved in organized societies. And through organized societies, the networking component happened. So, you know, all the doors that opened for me with um, getting involved in the American College of Radiology early, the American Association for Women in Radiology. I was, you know, I've been active since I was a young trainee. Uh, these can really lead to huge leadership opportunities and just widening your network. Uh, you know, through here, of course, uh, like I was talking to Deanne, earlier at the Society of Breast Imaging meeting a couple years ago. She just came by our AWR booth and we hit it off and look at where we are now. So always just having those avenues of communication open, the networking, I think is really important. But really, I mean, the world is their oyster. I know it sounds very cliche, but now more than ever, I think women are being supported uh, in all leadership roles and being sponsored. And so if any woman has any modicum of interest of ascending, there is a diverse cadre of mentors and sponsors here to support them. No, it's a great point. I think the only thing that I'd add is there's so many things to get involved in. And yes. so you just find out what you like and yes. get interested in it. And, and for, you know, you don't have to be a leader by only being involved in academic society. You can be a leader because you get involved in a company where yes. you find what they're doing interesting or you get involved in research. Whatever you do, just um, get involved to the max, I yeah. would say. And I think yeah. it's easier to do when you find things that you really uh, enjoy doing that give you a lot of yeah. energy. And then you can start to parse down, you know, once you found your areas of interest, because like I'll do things in Kansas City that, you know, don't really pertain exactly to radiology, but I'm passionate about. So, you know, like I chair the American Cancer Society Kansas City chapter. And right. yes, it's not just focused on radiology, but it's focused, I know, on the continuum of cancer care, which I'm passionate about. So I think over time, as you garner these roles, you'll know what you like, what you don't like, and then you can really focus on on your future. Yeah, well said. Well, thank you so much. This thank is you. a really exciting day for us. Um, we're so grateful to be partnered with, with your organization and look forward to many years of continued success. Yes, we do too. Thank you.